Change order, meeting of the Whaley Select Board on uh, November 20th, 2017. First item is approved minutes, meeting minutes of November 8th, 2017. I move that we approve the minutes. Yep. Second, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, minutes approved. Comments from the public? Dan, you have anything? Uh, nothing special. I just maybe at some point we get an update of the SCEMS meeting. I didn't manage to catch it. Well, I mean, not a lot. It was just more talking about the run rates and, and, and training and new machinery that they have to, to help with trachea stuff. It was, there was nothing. And, and there's no conversation, nor is there supposed to be or allowed to be conversation regarding housing. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, uh, as much as I'm convinced that there are people who know more than they would ever want to let on. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, they've got to figure out how to keep medication warm for another winter. Because right. we're not going to be in there this winter. So, it, you know, I, I, I chose to be, to be, um, I, I, I chose not to ruffle any feathers because I had forecast a year ago that we weren't going to be in there in the winter. And it really is a challenge because they have to keep the motor running in that ambulance all winter long to keep the, the um, medication above, well, I think it's 55 degrees. Right. Inside the building? No, inside no. The, the, the second back, ambulance. The back up in the second the, the back up ambulance has to be at the facility because they only have one room for one ambulance. So, right. you know, it's... And we're, yeah. we continue to pay costs that we shouldn't have to. But sure. it is what it is. And that takes nothing away from the generosity of, of Deerfield Academy, because they're great. Right. You know, yeah. my beef is with the mismanagement of the other side. Right. Yeah. They have a projected date for move in or something? No, they're not or? really allowed to have one. Oh, because it depends <laughs> on Deerfield Academy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, did, I did see trusses on site. No walls, but I saw trusses. trusses. Yeah. Right. Foundation is in, I guess. Yeah. My guess is, if I were a betting man, and I stopped betting on this a long time ago, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say May, June. Is at the time our agreement comes up again? I don't know. <laughs> what's, our, what's our year on that? Is it a fiscal year, July 1? Start, I think? Probably. Yeah, it's July 1. Well, is the, sure, is the, and, 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 you know, let, let's not forget, it's a great service. Yeah. As, mm -hmm. the, as much as we have challenges with, oh, it, you know, it, other things, things yeah. the thing the, is, this town is well served by being a yeah. part of Skims. And it's really a good thing that we're not the kind of people who would say, I told you so. No. That's the thing. It's always a learning opportunity. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. That's, that's what I got, Dan, you know. Thank you. But we are all pretty, doing pretty well at getting along in the sandbox together yeah. these days. Yeah, that's great. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have no scheduled appointments this evening. Uh, moving on to old business, town hall project update. Brian? So, um, last meeting you signed the special permit application uh, for the exterior improvements, and that was filed with the town clerk. Um, so, they started the interior work for the building. Um, and, Fred, you've probably been up there more recently than I have yeah. uh, as to what work they're doing. Um, and the ADA improvement grant was filed last Thursday. It was um, the final cost that we're asking is $224,425. And we have our fingers crossed we should hear by January 15th as to if we get all of that, some of that, or none of that. Did that application have the requisite letters of support from various officials? So we don't need to go asking for more letters. I've asked for or, stand in, receive. Yeah. Some applications. I did more than ask. I demanded? No. <laughs> and they're happy to I do drafted. It. They're happy to do it. <laughs> drafted. Yeah. Yeah. Of support. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been in yeah. every so often. I think right now what they're doing is, is the hazmat removal for the carpeting and some of the windows, so you can't get in the front door at all. So if we wanted to go visit, we couldn't get in? You have to go around the back. And the contractor's office kind of is in the back, the meeting room, back room, because they're not doing in the, in hazmat the, back in the, there. In the 
in the uh, Alice, uh, I'm sorry, the Virginia Alice that's, room? Yes. If that's where they're, they've been meeting the last week or so. So, okay. uh, and we got a meeting coming up tomorrow with them. Tomorrow afternoon, talk about schedule and utility work they want to do, and some other things, minor details of of the project. So, uh, that and also a meeting with with uh, Melissa. Caldwell, because I guess she has some concern of their uh, presence there and what they're going to eventually do to her property. So, who's she? Melissa Caldwell, the, next to the Smikes house. Oh. And the she owns side. back. She oh, went out and then yeah. and then south. And we have an easement with her for the existing sewer, so we're kind of touching that. So we'll meet with her tomorrow as well. So one o'clock. So. Else yeah, we just want to make sure that yeah. whatever happens back there, she's fully aware of and on board with. Right. No surprises. And there's surprises are not good. Right. And the special permit, what did you did you find out any more today? No, I have an email into the the, the clerk of the ZBA oh, okay. to make sure that that's getting posted in time. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on to the next item, old business. Special town meeting, signed the warrant. You've uh, so this is the presented us here with. I guess first of all, do we want, are there any changes that we want? Because I'll go back and type this before the end of the meeting. Oh, uh, I didn't see any changes. Well, is this what you presented last last time? Yep. So let's want to run through yeah. them quick. Yeah, yeah why don't you go, go through quick. Article one was the, the fifty-eight dollars for um, unpaid bills unpaid bills for prior fiscal year. Is that our our proportion? Beach, that is our share. Okay. Article two, that's unpaid bills, unpaid phone bills for the water department. Thirteen hundred dollars. That is an entire year mm. plus of <clears throat> bills that. I but were never paid. Guess slipped through the cracks. Oh really? Um, and the transition from the superintendents and the move here, somehow it, they got there. Okay. My guess is it will come up, and or if it doesn't, we should be prepared with what is in that account. What's what's the um, amount of money in that account after the thirteen hundred dollars is paid? Okay. Right now they're at seventy eight thousand, close to seventy eight thousand in retained earnings. Se seven eight zero zero zero. Seven eight zero zero zero. Okay, so there's enough money to pay the $1,300 phone bill. There's enough money, yeah. Okay. But there, that, a lot of that money is earmarked or something, right? No, that's, their, that's the, the enterprise fund's equivalent of our free cash, of the town's free oh, cash. okay. So that's unencumbered. Okay. Why is it $1,300? It just seems um, like a lot of talking. It's about $60 a month, a little more than that, $60, $70 a month, which, depending on who you're buying your phone from, I mean, it's a little, it's higher than what I pay at home for mine, but I don't know what the... Maybe a commercial rate. You can be pretty sure there's some late fees included in that. <laughs> but, but towns, it's... Unless they're not considered a town, they're not allowed to pay late fees. I don't think we're allowed to pay service charges. I don't think we're allowed to pay late fees either. That's what Lynn always drills into my head. I'll double, I'll double check. Yeah. I mean, by, by mass law. Okay. Okay. Article 3. Again, this is Water Department Enterprise Fund. The water commissioners have requested a transfer of $15,000 from the from their retained earnings to pay for unanticipated expenses. Most of those are related to the manganese management project and the pilot study that MassDEP required the department to undertake to prove the technology that they want to install. Okay. Article 4. Article 4, this is what we had talked about for work for the um, for the Veterans Monument in the center of town. We submitted the letter of intent November 15th. Mm -hmm. I heard back today that we've been asked to submit a full proposal for okay. that project. Oh, that's good news. Um, so what I, what I hope to do here is the amount we put on the letter of intent was $15,000. <laughs> 
it's a one-to-one -one match. I think we could realistically get about $7,500 in in-kind match, mm -hmm. labor, volunteer labor, <coughs> donations, stuff like that, um, so that we can mm -hmm. spread the cost around a little bit instead of asking for the full 15 in, right. in cash. Because I think we'll have some volunteers, and I know Jim mm -hmm. Ross and, yeah, they have and his folks are up here. the volunteers. Okay. So great. Okay. This will only be spent if we get that grant, um, or or it can be spent otherwise. It's not written in a manner that would restrict it to the grant. No. Okay. Um, so if if we want it written that way, we can. No, I think it's fine the way it is. So they can still proceed to do something if yeah. we don't get the grant. The language would not. The language, the language is not restrictive in right. that sense. Okay. Article five, and again, that money would come. That's seventy five hundred from free cash, twenty seventeen free cash. Article five is is to transfer the sum of five thousand dollars of free cash into the sprinkler system repair account at the Whaley Elementary School. The one proposal we have for additional analysis for the system mm -hmm. is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm not. I have a meeting with with John Hannum, the building commissioner. I'm setting up a meeting with John Hannum, the building commissioner. And Bob Lesko. Now we're going to talk more about what the what the right path is to take, mm -hmm. and we'll come back with a recommendation to the board. Um, regardless, the school is being required to re replace the sprinkler heads, all of the sprinkler heads in the building. Mm -hmm. um, if this money's if this money's not used for the analysis, it could be used to purchase the sprinkler head. You know, it could be used to purchase, pay for part of the sprinkler right. So, so regardless, that, that money is going to be needed. The sprinkler heads are going to be a pretty penny. Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Article six, seven, and eight are requests from the CPC. The first one is, Jonathan, you might have interest in this one to rescind the appropriation. Just kidding, you'd be in, you might be interested in Article 7. This is to rescind the appropriation for the Hutkowski APR of $23,600. That APR um, did not get through the state. Oh. So um, that money would be returned to, um, to, the CPC. to the CPC Open Space Reserve. Okay. Article 7, CPC voted to return the sum of $14,376 of CPA funds being the amount of funds remaining from an appropriation of 18,000 from a 2013 special town meeting for, for the addition and rehabilitation of baseball and softball fields at Hurley Field in 219 Christian Lane back to the unreserved fund balance. Yeah, I, I had a conversation with Alan Sanderson about that and I'm, okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. The, the caveat obviously being that once we have a, an actual plan or a, not an actual plan, we had a plan before, once we have a plan that can actually be implemented, We'll go back to the CPC for pr probably more money than that to build additional fields because the fields we, we have right now, A, we may lose one of them. May or may not, but we may lose one of them. And yeah, secondly, yeah. the fields we have right now, if you know anything about fields, when they're overused, they get beat up. And, and a field has a shelf life. Right. Um, and, and so at, at some point, we are going to have to add fields. Um, and there are a lot of ideas being floated around to, as to how to add fields that would not only serve their purpose, but also be used as a marketing um, effort to attract young families to, to town as Whitley is, is the place to live, work, and play. And recreation is a big part of that. So we'll be, going, we'll, we'll be coming back for more money okay. at some point. So long as we're, we're talking about that, uh, there was a study done with Open, Open Space Committee and Recfield and a few other committees about 10 years ago. It talked about recreational facilities, but it didn't specifically address athletic fields, put it that way. It talked about river access, bikeways, sidewalks, things like that. Uh, should we uh, consider setting up another Committee or open space committee? I don't. I don't see them anywhere listed as a no, committee. The, the conversation seven, you were talking about happened has to have happened a lot longer than ten years ago because 2006 there was a study done. Well, okay, eleven or twelve years ago. Then. 
2006. Yeah, that was the tail end of the existence yeah. of the Open Space Committee. Yeah. Should, should we be considering having a committee, open space or whatever you want to call it, to, to look at all these options that are available for rec fields in town, uh, either on town-owned property or purchasing additional property to Not have rec idea. fields? But the, it's, it's a good idea. Fred. The challenge, as we all know, is finding volunteers to, to sit on these committees is painful, right. even with the current allotment of committees. Right. Um, I know, yeah, right. I, I don't know who was on this committee before. Unless you, you oh, there, I mean, I was, Tom Littman was, who's mm -hmm. obviously going to be impossible to get. Yeah. Um, there were a couple other people Chris who were no Coffin longer was in, town. Her, but she's not in town. What's anymore. that? Chris Coffin, wasn't she on it? She, I think Chris was on it. Mary, um, she moved to the Cape. Mary Shanley mm -hmm. was on it. Um, and there was a guy who was also. What's the committee that makes sure that your setback is? I don't know. What, ZBA or planning? Or? Pl um, planning or ZBA or zoning? Mm, anyway, he's gone. Yeah, I think he moved to Northampton. So no one's left in town except for me. Yeah. Um, it's not to say that we couldn't find new people who might yeah. be interested in open space, but. but I, I, I think it's appropriate time since we, you know, we have potentially lose the field at the blue school. Well, don't we have 10 acres at the swimming hole? Isn't there? Where? At the swimming hole? Don't we own it? Well, yeah, that's that's one option. Yeah, there's there's land there. To and, the south? Yeah, to south the south. The it's, yeah. And and I, I heard the other day there there is a ball field. There, there was one for years at uh, Yankee Candle or the old Marillac cabinets. The backstop is still there. In the back, you go in the parking lot, you'll see a big open field. I don't know, five, six, eight acres on the map. But Here, is, is nice. it Whaley property or is it Maryland? I mean, it's Yankee Candle. It's Yankee Candle, right? Right, but they own it now. I know, but if they may be willing to share that with the town. I, I think this is a good argument for having some committee. Some committee, right, to look at these. Organize it all in. Right, to look at all these options and see what's the best for the town. Because, well, and it would have to include a committee and that, you know, for instance, I've been hearing more and more people saying, why wouldn't we buy Blue School well, for a dollar? Uh, you could make a good argument both ways, but... You, well, you, I don't know about that. you, you got to look at the, the, the cost of what are you going to do with it afterwards, and is it more economical? Under the guise of, if people think buy. it's a good idea, you don't want to dump on their good idea. No. But you can well, buy additional property. You can buy additional less, property if, maybe, if there's a seller. If there's a seller, right. You could for less than what it's going to cost you to make yeah. that a, or own the property. So, but yeah. I, if we can find the, if we can put it out there that the open space committee can be reassembled. Can we put an announcement on the website? Well, you did it for, I think, housing trustees <clears throat> at one point. Can you? Yeah. It was Sometimes a seven-member committee before. Add one for that. Whether you call it open space, is that still the right term for it, or, or you want? I don't doesn't, know. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to tell with that. That's the the lot that's owned by the town. That one. Uh, it Where? looks like that's the that's the Tri Town. Yeah. But this beach. this part is all open all fenced in right here. Right. Right. I don't. I mean, comparing over, say, to the size of, like, this is kind of where Hurley is. Yeah. And I don't know how much, of, what percentage of that block is. It's a much smaller block, but it may be a... I, I don't know, but that's options, yeah. Okay, moving on. I mean, the uh, ideal, obviously, is to just expand Hurley. Yeah. But that has its own <clears throat> can of worms yeah. associated with it. Okay, Brian, moving on to Article what, 8. Article 8. The CPC is requesting um, the transfer of the sum of $6,000 of CPA funds from the unreserved fund balance to the housing reserve. That's a transfer from reserve to reserve. Okay. Article 9 is a zoning amendment that's um, recommended by the planning board that Judy Markman talked about last meeting, which was to um, reflect the change in state law, which says that for the purposes of Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 3, which is part of it's the agricultural exemption, that the cultivation of marijuana is not agriculture for those 
mm -hmm. and that just reflects the state definition, as, as flawed as it may be. But do we are we bound to that definition? Um, I mean, for now, we are. For the purposes, yes, of 40A Section 3. Though there are a number of ways to skin a cat, so. Yeah. Okay. Well done. That, that was the last one. That's the last one. Right. We were discussing the potential of a 3% surtax for recreational marijuana. It's not no. on the ballot. No. 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 It's not. Not at this point. Not at this point. So, so, I mean, my thinking for that then is, is well, I, I question whether that's something that should be voted on by the entire town or or be presented at a special town meeting when we have less input. Yeah, no, that's fine. My only concern is, is, I don't know if you can backtrack on it. If the license are issued, can you then put a tax on it? Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. And the meals tax worked that way. Now we yeah. didn't have to go back to everyone who got the... Uh, but was, that was at an annual town meeting, approved the meals tax? How was that approved? Yeah. Um, it was, it was defeated at a non-annual town meeting. I don't remember when it was passed. I think it was a non-annual as well. We just came back and after we did our due diligence with the people who would be affected on meals tax. The board approved it then? Yeah. Okay. Then, then how, going back further, how was the CPA percent decided? Was that town meeting again? The CPA. The 3% CPA, you didn't have to do 3%. So that was a town meeting. That, that was a town meeting. Yeah. No, CPA, that was a yeah. Yeah. CPA was... Adopting it. Yeah. yeah, when you adopt well, it, it was required to do a town meeting. This could be the same situation, I guess. You know, my concern is that the calendar is not our friend on this, that that the trains leave in the station and by the time annual town meeting comes around, so many things will have transpired already that anyone who wants to get involved with this is going to be behind the eight ball. Uh, I'm not sure there's any way around it. Uh, well, I think that's why Northampton and Amherst have already put it in place. Just right, because the, the calendar just an April town meeting. It's not right. Right, they have they have a lot more flexibility, yeah. um, and they also. I mean, there's part of the regulations are favorable to existing medical marijuana treatment centers, so if you have like an existing MMPC, it's a lot easier for that organization to flip over to the other side. So. I've been in touch with the, um, but to that end, I've been in touch with the commission and the executive director uh, of, of the commission to try to have a rural hearing. That's all I had, you know, no news on that. But I'm, I know I'm pushing that to happen. Good. OK. Uh, is, that, that, okay is that signed already? Yes, so a special town meeting will be, that's what, a Monday, December 11th at 7 p.m. at town offices right here. All right? Yep. And so our meeting is going to be at 6 o'clock or 6.30? 6 o'clock. Do you have 6 enough for an hour? I hope, the hour? Oh, yeah, I'm sure I can fill the hour. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. <laughs> or 45 minutes of the hour, whatever. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on. New business. Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District Agreement. So it has been three years since the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District was um, formed through an IMA of, well, now it's, it's 25 towns, one city and one, 26 towns and one city, Greenfield. Um, municipalities are required to provide um, services to their veterans, and it's much more efficient to have one or two or three people do it for 26 towns than it is for each town to have one person mm -hmm. who does it. And um, so this is a, this is a, would be an inter, this is an intermunicipal agreement for the next three years. Our the town's representative is Don Sluter and mm -hmm. he would like it to be um, signed. He thought it, they've done a very good job in all my interactions with him. <coughs> no, okay. Positive and professional. Mm -hmm. Nice article about them. I mean, not far back, but recent. Yeah, I think they yeah. won the. They won some award or some yeah. award. Yeah. Um, 
I haven't heard anything bad. I haven't had any issues. Okay. Thank so you. you have something for me to sign? Yeah. So chair. We have the last one on the agreement. And while he's signing that, just to double check, the special town meeting is 7 o'clock on the December 11th, and our meeting is 6 o'clock on December 11th. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, I had them on the wrong date, so I'm glad that came up. Okay, local cultural council funding agreement. Each year we get annual cultural council funds from the state, and each year we sign an agreement that allows the state to give us those funds. <coughs> it's not a huge chunk of change. This year it's $4,400. Still nice. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the next. Agricultural preservation restriction. Agricultural preservation restriction. So there are three APRs in well, I would say they're in different stages, but they're all pretty much in the same stage that are pending in the town. One is the Smirowski APR, and the other one is the Smith APR, and the other one's um, the Wilcox APR. Mm -hmm. And the town has appropriated CPA funds for each of these in, um, mm -hmm. in past town meetings. And this is really the, the next step in the paperwork for the the APR is being executed. These are all pretty small ones, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So it requires um, the signatures of the town, to, and the town becomes a co-holder of the APR. Mm -hmm. The other, the um, the other holder is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and we both will have authority to enforce um, mm -hmm. the um, the restrictions. And I think that's a good idea because the town is putting up some money for it and they should be able to protect their interests, in okay. my opinion. So who would actually enforce it for the town? Um, well, well the, sta the statute says that the Conservation Commission or Select Board. Oh, okay. I vote for the con con Conservation Commission. Have They're sort of in a better position to judge things. Have they been involved in these APRs before, the Conservation? Commission? Um, most of these got their start before I was here. I, I believe they've been involved in it, yeah. Okay. Any okay, three signatures or just one? Um, I think it's just one. Oh, you're, 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 you list, you list three, okay. Each one just gets your signature. Okay. okay, but we got, okay, there's two Smith and... Yeah, one, one of these are combined. Okay, okay. They're, they're organized they're under the... How they're being funded through the federal government. There's two different... Series of funding that Department of Agriculture Resources is getting through the federal government. So the board will be, the, we will receive the actual um, agricultural preservation extension document that we'll review when that gets reported. That's part of this. You know, the you know, cost control is his, his own uh, APR out. I don't know if it was. Are you asking? I don't know if it was intentional. I, I don't think deadlines were met. Oh, I think deadlines were met. That. Um, oh, required the state to reject it. Anyone else? Town administrator updates. Everybody's favorite part of the meeting. Oh, anyway. 
Are, is the tax rate re recapitulation part of it? Yeah, the tax rate is certified. Um, it is certified at $15.34. That's down from $15.60. So it's 26 cents lower than the prior fiscal year. So we're cutting taxes. Tax rates. Yeah, cutting tax rates. Yeah. Cutting taxes. And I had a request. Fred thought it would be um, we should review the priority project list. Yeah. And what Fred and I talked a little bit about was to try to show how it's changed. I like that. That's a. And I printed it nice and big for those who who need to be able to see it nice and big. Is this the time to ask questions? If we notice something that we will. Why don't we ask Ryan to explain what, what, you, what first switch we have here? So this was from April 2017, this first column here. Okay. And then this is what the board discussed in, on July 26th. Okay. Um, and this is the order that, that um, the board had talked about. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I put um, some recommendations in this last column here. And I've also notated where you know it's completed or will but call not resolved. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and then there's some recommendations here as to things that have come up in the meantime that really mm -hmm. warrant our attention. Some of them in the, yeah. the immediate short term, like health insurance changes, is going to be it's going to be a, a, a big lift over the next four or five months up until April because it's something I think we want yeah. to get, we want to yeah. focus on. Recreational marijuana is another thing. Really around that same time period. Not to mention it's budget season, so yeah. it'll be a pretty busy spring. Well, one, one thing I, you know, just, uh, or I don't see it on here yep. is the renovation of this building for town offices. I think it's the very first Top one. Oh, town office, okay, town office renovation, okay. Uh, you want a quick update on kind of where that stands right now? Sure, yeah, if you want to mind going through. So the, so the vault was installed, and uh, the last thing we're waiting on for the vault is for the installation of the fire protection system, because we're in a large sprinkler building, and you can't have unsprinkled parts of a building. So we need to install a um, fire protection system in there. I've had a lot of discussions about whether just drop a sprinkler head in or it should be some type of clean agent or gas or something along those lines. Um, and Lynn has been working on that, looking at the different uh, cost options for that. So in the long part of the building here, if you go back there, we have a tremendous amount of files in that space that we had to clear out when we rented the space to um, New Pro. So that, there's a lot of file storage there. And then when we moved over the vault, all of the contents of the vault from the town hall vault, um, we weren't able to put those in the vault yet. <clears throat> so those are back there as well, behind the existing vault. So what we really need to wrap up the fire suppression system, we'll get the shelving inside the vault, which will clear out those others, which will clear out the vault stuff that's behind the vault. A lot of vaults. Mm -hmm. That stuff will go in the vault, then the stuff that's in this part of the building, um, we can move that and we can set up our storage areas behind the vault, how we want them in another storage area, and we can move them. And then that space will get freed up for uh, divvying up for more offices. So there's, it's not going as quick as we would like, but it's, it, it's going. Okay, because we had money approved, it was the last town meeting for the renovation of the offices or creation of offices there yeah. so you still have that we do yeah money available for that so yeah and that's not forgotten okay we're just trying to do things in a, a certain sequence so we can get everything organized for the long term right. and 
Okay, so now really it's the, the vault and the sprinkler that's holding everything up. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll be able to occupy. You know, we'll be able to get the shelving in there that we want in there. Um, that'll be ready to go. Okay. The other spaces will get cleared out and we can get organized. Okay. Now that sounds great. Everybody's really busy, so it's going to take a concerted effort to find time um, to do that. Okay. And how is our dealings with NUPRO there? Or NUPRO, whatever. Where the NUPRO is that going? They pay the rent, that's good. Okay. Um, I haven't heard no of any issues, issues with there. I see them once or twice a week with the forklift. Okay. Going back, um, mostly they're in. They're still just in the garage space right now. Okay. Um, but they're renting the whole space back there, garage and the open. They're renting a, a portion of. They're renting the entire garage and a portion of the, the interior high ceiling space. Yeah. Okay. It's not occupied. They have a handful of things there, but. Okay. Um, they pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either way. Trailers out back of theirs. I believe so. Okay, do you, you want to move on here with I mean, do we want to go down? Well, why don't we just ask questions of the ones there? Well, okay, okay. Or add things we want, or well, move things I, around? I'm curious what's happened with the demand of property that's moved it from a lower priority to a higher priority. That's a big jump. Uh, yeah. Um, discussions that, we've had discussions with, well, Richard Tilburg from the Housing Committee, and about whether that should be used for affordable housing and board had talk about finding a commercial realtor to see if there was any movement on that. Um, well, we have such limited commercial land available and we very much need added tax revenue. So, it, we need to, to to do what we talked about before, and, and looking for looking for some commercial real estate person who understands the market demand for property like that. But I sort of also think that we should be, as someone who lives somewhat close to the development property, we should be having a conversation with the people in the general vicinity of the development property who live there to talk with them about what their thoughts about that property use should be. Because we all know that it's going to be come up with as a topic at some point, and if we don't talk to people sooner rather than later, they're going to think that we're doing it behind their backs. I don't, yeah, that may be good to do, but I don't think there's any, uh, the adjoining property owners, well, it's one across the street, I guess. Yeah, but it's more than the adjoining property owners. I I, I'm pretty confident that everybody on Swamp Road would think it's something that it would impact yeah. their traffic flow at the very end. Okay. And perhaps even Christian Lane. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. you know, some of this, uh, correct me, Brian, but it's coming from the, house, the housing committee, and we've had various discussions of whether that's <coughs> a useful site, say, for some kind of uh, community housing, low income, low income housing, mm -hmm. or, or not. Uh, we have the housing committee has really didn't get a, a I would say a favorable response of who they've been talking to to various agencies that could develop that. Uh, it is it is a you know a multi part possibly a multi-family a multi-unit development could go in there, but. I guess it would come back to, to really how much the housing committee wants to pursue that. Well, well I'm not I mean, sure I agree with that, right? because the housing committee uh, doesn't run the town. No, no, but they would be the ones that would be involved in, in setting all this up with whatever agency wants to do that. Well, right, but then but right. we have to decide as a board right. what the ideal use for that property is, and if we right. it goes to housing as opposed to commercial, it means that it's potentially less revenue for the town. Right. Well, I think housing has said that right now they're not interested in it as, as a, for future housing. 
That's what I think. Well, we've said lately, and, and they've indicated that the town should put it on the market to see what kind of interest uh, yeah. developers have for it. And that, that's where it stands now. There was no, no discussion of what kind of development are we yeah. would be acceptable there, whether it's a Dunkin' Donuts or it's a car dealership or, or medical right, offices. But that wouldn't be played for housing. That, that's not no, the not way. for housing, I mean, but, I mean, but to advertise yeah. it for, for commercial development, I, I guess one of the things they're asking it or will be asking, what kind of development does the town want to have there? Well, right, but, that, but that's our domain. That's not the housing community's right. domain. No, right, but, but to advertise it, they would, they, they're, they're, well, I guess they're kind of asking Brian to, to, to advertise it on local and state registers, but I think you have to specify what kind of... But why is the housing committee asking for They're, they're not involved understand. anymore. I think well, that's they're not, he's, saying, okay. he's saying that they're well, asking for that. that. No, okay. When Richard uh, came here, his request to the board was that the town put it out to see if it's available for commercial uh, for commercial uses yes. or you know yeah. a higher better use and then if it wasn't there and then if it wasn't then the housing committee may I have guess. interest okay, well. I, that was my understanding of his request yeah. to the board he thought I, my understanding from what if I'm remembering right was he just thought for reasons much like you were saying that it might be better for the town if that were commercially developed Right, so that there's a, a more tax base, um, and if we fail at that, then maybe the housing committee would take a second look at it. Right, but that's, I think that's why it's from low to high. Right, and that's it's, fine. it's kind of like the balls in our court. It wasn't and, in our court. And, and, right. and it's why I think we should have a conversation with people whose traffic patterns would be impacted, and also naturally abutters, to see what type of commercial entity they would and they don't get to sit aside but we should have their input yeah. in terms yeah. of what they think that that they might like to see or wouldn't mind seeing or, or what that priority list is yeah. or what they would just go to their grave against yeah. so i asked the conservation commission for a, a finding on that subject it's new uh, septic but it's yeah that's conservation it's it's, 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 uh, it's board of health a board of health the, the concert, well, we, the, the plan, the housing committee has already yeah. well, had some conversations with conservation commission, and we know what's developable, what portion is developable, what isn't. Right, but whether or not but, that system is usable. Well, that's board of health, I guess. Because that system was put in a couple years before the place burned down. Yeah, but now there's some issue. Now you're going into a new use, and it's right on the swamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, that is the swamp. I so thought the conservation was involved in that. Uh, we've had some discussions, but it's going to come down to Title V inspection, whether it's usable or not. I mean, all that should take place as part of our due diligence. Well, mm -hmm. see, that hasn't been done because... Well, yeah. At well, what's our, our action item really is just, what do we, what's the next step, I guess? I, I feel like we're kind of talking all I, around it. Finding is, a commercial realtor. Is the next step finding, and then, then, then that's on Brian's plate then, to find a commercial yeah. realtor. Well, uh, that or or maybe the next step is kind of tied in with the, with the blue school. If we're going to have to have a public meeting or hearing to decide or to present options for a blue school disposition and hear what people have to say, why don't we add to DeMaio and you can put the, cent the center school in, I guess, if you want. Have a property disposition public hearing. See what people, comments people have. They're all going to come up at some time or other. Yeah, but each one of those properties could be its own conversation, and right. you, and 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 you'll, you're going to have people. You, I think it'd be a very challenging meeting to to facilitate. I, I I hate to add more meetings, but I sort of think that it needs each property needs its own time in the sun. Okay, but we're looking at the schedule. You know, the the, the blue school we're we're hoping to get something by. Uh, the annual town meeting. So if you have public meeting hearing, you're looking at what February or March. I don't know, Demayo, if you get anything any sooner than that. But it was on the market for quite some time without a heck of a lot of interest. Well, no interest. So, yeah. 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 So it, it it may be that we're we're showing a lot of concern over something that's just not going to happen. Yeah. There was there was one the the the, the there was a pool, pool come yeah. But he was kind of interested yeah. in the longer range. He wasn't yeah. interested in. 
getting in there. And no, we've we've talked to the, the housing committee. Has talked with the develop with the uh, real estate agent that has the, the, had the last listing for it and showed us all the other listings. And it's been on the market for over like a thousand days, oh, over well, four, five that, years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on and off with different agents and no interest at all, and it kept reducing in price. So yeah, I think the uh, price was pretty. High. I mean, it went down, but you're probably only looking at fifty or seventy-five thousand anyway. Right. As, 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 as a as yeah. I, I kind of think Joyce is, and I don't know that she was saying this, but I think she was. She's on the right track. We need to deal with the Blue School first. Right. Then we need to deal with DeMaio. But let's. I mean, the Blue School is because we have a partner in this of the schools. Yeah, right. We need to, to get our ducks in a row with that sure. first, and then yeah. once that's dealt with, we can turn our attention to other property. But, but right, okay, I, I agree. Well, maybe it should. Uh, maybe it should just go. It's up a to lower the, the lower list, the lower part of higher priority, I guess. If you or can put it on medium priority, and then hopefully okay. down to but, medium. Okay. But essentially, the ball's on our court on that. So right. Right. Where we put it on our list, probably low is not the right place. But medium. Whether the bottom medium. or the high, or the high or the medium. But we know that nothing's going to happen until the blue school's taken right. care of. So, okay, so let's move it down to medium, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a question about the frontier long-range plan. Yes. Um, and I think I, I'm going to guess what the answer is, and you can tell me if I'm close. I went to the meeting about where they presented their long-range plan, and um, it says resolved here. Um, it, that does not mean that all of the repairs have been made that they were predict, pre, they were saying would be needed, but it, it's resolved in the sense that they need to go back and do a little more homework on grants and about um, a whole bunch of things that they, they got uh, much, much feedback. So is it resolved in the sense that it's not going to be on our plate anytime soon, or is this resolved in the sense that we, we found a long-range plan for, for funding infrastructure at, at Frontier? So. This is actually, and we should put Frontier Bond on here um, oh. somewhere. Frontier Long Range Plan was, was in reference to a, a long range <coughs> facility study that was, how do I put this nicely, that was supposed to be completed by UMass. Oh, by UMass that students. Yeah. So it got um, resolved by not getting done. It got and I still have, we haven't right. seen that final study that was given to the schools yet, as I recall. Um, they gave us the draft. I'll have to see if the well, well, part of what they came back with, what they came back with, was we're going to complete this during our, the fall semester, and we're going to have a different set of students do it as part of their mm -hmm. curriculum. So um, there may be a second version I have. I'll, I'll look to see if I had sent it to you. Um, but when they came back after the two years, it was. Okay, well, we didn't really get anything done, but now we're going to do it this fall. Now we're really, really going to do it. Most of the towns and the select boards. And our money is spent two and a half this, years. Correct? No, we did, we have not paid anything. We sh I don't think we should. I honestly don't think we should. I, I agree with you. Yeah. If, if there's a request for payment, I will I will let you know. Yeah, because there's no, that's not a slam dunk in any stretch of the imagination, at least from my opinion. Yeah. So that's what that 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 refers to. So I. I Use the word resolved because I didn't really want to complete it because yeah. that's okay. giving a lot of credit. But we should add the frontier, frontier bond or, or something here, I believe, at, at some priority. That should be a higher priority, I think. We're actually. waiting for them to come back. Yeah, the, to do yeah this. that one is a ball's not in our court right now. Yeah. But, yeah. So but, I that, soon. but it, yeah, we should expect it back on our list. Yeah. So I don't think it matters that much where we put it right now in here, whether it's in medium or whether it's in low or whether it's in high, because the ball's not in our court. Okay. Uh, solar, got solar projects, medium, electricity purchase, that's from uh, the facility in Chicopee? Well, we still have the, the option to purchase electricity at 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. But where's the one for next amp on here that we're negotiating? Um, the next amp pilot is not on here. It could be on here. Okay. But it probably would be under high priority because it's underway and now that our 
Now that our negotiator is uh, back in one piece. Back in one did did piece. we decide to go with the 11? I, I think we tentatively had decided to go with the, or at least the Energy Committee had recommended that. And that's how we discussed it here as well. Yeah. well what, what we, were, what we, we decided to do was to sign the, a right of first refusal to purchase, to lock in right. the price at 11, 11 and a half cents. Yeah. Uh, I, but I thought the deadline was, was back August or September to actually sign up. I guess they have not come to us and said They have that. not come to us. I don't think the project is It's not progressing as close to. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Because we didn't see any, I don't recall seeing any downside to making that right. purchase. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That was. Yeah. Uh, but back to the next standpoint, I think should be maybe high priority if we're going to, you know, Hopefully they're going to try to build something next summer, next yeah. next year. You know, Plus, year's gone by already. Since it's going to happen, I like putting something on a high priority list that I know next time we get here is going to be done. So done. It's added. It's added. Good. Sure, add next sample. Okay. 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 Uh, one thing we we talked about before is. Uh, Capital Improvement Committee or Capital Projects Committee, whatever. Right now there's, I don't know, it's only got half the members and whether it's working properly or not, I guess, is a question and uh, I guess I've shared some stuff with, with Brian the last couple of months of what other communities have done for that and how they restructure that or what the, the goal of that committee should be and, and I think we need to seriously look at that committee and how our capital projects come to the town and are they really representative of what need what the needs are I, I'm who not, I wasn't appoints that committee yeah why well, don't have there, there looking at there was a members on there who the school needs finances to, the school on there. needs to appoint no, well, a representative because um, school needs to oh don skraski's don skraski's not He's not on school, school committee. Oh, he's not on school committee. No. So, but, well, you look on there and you only see three out of the five or six members on there. Who's on uh, it right now? Uh, it's under C. I don't see it for C. Finance. Look under maybe finance. There's finance. a finance. Capital improvement. Departments. Those are departments. Sorry, boards and committees. Capital improvement planning committee. Yeah. There we go. There's a member from our committee. That was Paul. Yeah, and I, I assume that. He did? Yeah. Paul last year. Yeah, last year. There are five people listed. It includes Ooh. Brian and Fred, okay. Bruce Tooten, Roger Kennedy, and Bruce Cleary. Um, and then there's place for two other people, uh, superintendent's representative, I assume that's school committee person, yeah. Yeah. and then an another at-large representative is, is empty. So there's two spaces on the Capital Improvement yeah. Planning Committee. So five or seven is not awful. But. No, but but if you take off Brian and myself, I mean, you only got two two people on there. That Three: Bruce, Roger, and Bruce. Oh. I think with their Bruce's are overrepresented on yeah. this committee, and I see no women. Well, other than that, but but I, but I think you, you should have people that are have some interest in the buildings we have, in our capital improvements. Uh, well, I, are you saying these people don't are not interested in? No, but the, the the way I've seen it for the one meeting I went last year, and that was only one meeting. They meet once, and that's it. Brian was there too, and we didn't get the the all the requests that should have been presented mm. because some of them were presented during the budget cycle here when we had budget meetings. We had other items come up. Well, can you that, for instance? Uh, I mean, I don't repairs to repairs to the to the highway building, or even the fire station. They were, well, uh, there's. I don't know exactly which ones of them came up at budget hearings, but there was some discussion on it, and it didn't come up at the capital improvement planning committee. But that's where that mm -hmm. stuff should be coming up. I mean, we, yeah. we know ahead we're going to, looking ahead, we're going to have um, capital projects on both of them buildings, say at least. Looking ahead, we're going to have a new building. Uh, right. <laughs> but we need, to get, we need to get something in the, in the system to do that. If you look at, right. I think, Brian put together a 10-year listing of, 
of what all the departments submitted for the budget season and I'd say a majority of that is related to either equipment needs, uh, vehicles, whatever, not so much to building, building maintenance. I, I don't see that being addressed mm. unless it's an emergency. Oh, we, we've got this issue, uh, 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 I don't know, yeah. uh, the, the boiler fails in the highway department. Well, he's got that on there, I, I guess, but, uh, or the fire station. It, it strikes me that we need someone, and you know, and it certainly is Keith at some level, to spell out specifically when all the capital items in town were built, installed, what have you. Like a boiler, for instance. Yeah. If you know the date that a boiler was installed, a, a good plumber is going to tell you within six months when it's going yeah. to fail. Right. Um, and, and when was a roof installed? So, when, right. All these kinds of things so that we at least, I mean, we're very good at pushing things off. So right. at least if we oh, yeah. knew what was coming up, we can forecast what we're going to push off. Right. Like, yeah. well, I mean, my, my proposal was to, to have every building owner do that and either come to some point, to some committee, whatever you want to call it. And so we have a picture of, of what we have today, the age of it, and when we expect to replace it. You know, how many roofs are we going to do in the next 10 years? How many boilers are we going to do? Uh, what isn't it handicapped accessible that we need to do? Uh, mm -hmm. thing, things yeah. like that. Uh, windows, you know, when are we painting? I, that kind of stuff. And I, and, uh, I, and I guess, Fred, I think, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I think we should put it on the shoulders of one person rather than dividing it out by who's responsible for a building because by, by looking at someone saying this is your responsibility to do all the buildings, he or she can go to all the different residents of those buildings or the people who are using them and find yeah. that out. And when you divide those responsibilities out, you, you're, it's too easy to pass the buck. Just have one person responsible for it, and that one person probably should sit on this com on this committee. Well, right, yeah, at least that one person, yeah. Right, well, Keith would, is involved with fire department and, and his building, so he would know what's going on with him. Police station is next door, so. Yeah, but it should uh, be one person. It shouldn't be. Okay, well, I don't know if you want to, you know, yeah. Keith is the, is the one we suggest or not, but as an aside, you know, the library did a 10-year capital improvement project, a 10-year capital improvement study. I don't know if you've seen it. They hired a consultant about four or five years ago. It's online. It's somewhere on the website. They did it, and the consultant listed improvements they need to do to the building, and they've been doing them every year. So some of them come here to, to for town funding. Uh, the windows, the boiler replacement, the mini split systems, the gutters, uh, they got the kitchen, I think, last year. All of them were listed in this plan that that consultant developed. Yeah. The thing they haven't done yet is expensive handicapped access. That's on the plan. The library has done that. They're following that. And that's, I think, we, we need to do something similar to that for our buildings in town. Yeah, and I agree. I just, the library is a unique operation. Right. So, right. But I think it should be one person who's responsible for facility maintenance across the town. Okay. Because that, and then, then that person, they know, all right, this is on my to-do list. Right. And I know when it has to be done by. But if you divide it by four people, it just doesn't work. Well. And also, a, a committee of volunteers might not be the best place to get a good result out of that. I agree with that. And um, uh, you know, we sort of need, in a way, if we, if we had a Bob Lesko for our town, then that'd be the person we asked. But the, so with the closest thing we have, um, we've got this awesome guy named Brian on the committee already, but he's not necessarily the building expert, but he is the guy who knows the guy who's expert on all the various buildings. He may be the expert on this building at this point. I don't well, there's, uh, but there's other. but it, it, does, it does seem like, like that's, that's something you, if the library used money so that they could get it done right, yeah. I think then I think we either have to pay someone who's an employee, and then that's probably the, the best first start at that. We, we, it's it's got to be paid, not volunteer. So right. in, in a way, well, the the, pla the capital planning committee was a volunteer committee, and you're pointing out it's it's kind well, of dysfunctional. Then I, I think that's I think that's a good point. Was it volunteer or were we appointed? 
Who is the board appointed? Well, they're not paid. No, they're, they're not paid. Okay, well, right. volunteer. Okay. Right. It's not. So they're, it's not so. They don't wake up in the morning saying, "Oh my God, I have to do yeah. this." But they might. Right. They might not. So, so you're proposing hiring someone? No. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I, I would put it in Brian's lap and say, Brian, how is this schedule going to be created and done by someone who is either on our current payroll, or if that person is too overloaded with other responsibilities? Yeah. Where are we going to find money in a budget to to pay that person? It's 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 one or the other, yeah, right. but but I think that the three of us aren't in a position to make that decision, but Brian is. Okay, well, I I have, I have some suggestions. Other people that we could possibly look at. Some are town employees, and others maybe we could pay that are knowledgeable of building maintenance. I guess we don't want somebody just to be on a committee. No, but Keith certainly is. I know, but there, there's others in town. That I, that I could recommend as well, so. Yeah, I can't find that library uh, thing, though. With the it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere, it's in there, I've seen it. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I think that the current, I was honestly surprised last year when I went to the first capital planning improvement yeah. committee meeting, and that was the only meeting that happened. Yeah, right. Um, so, so, so part of it is, so part of it is, is, is the committee only meets once, and looks at what's submitted, that's gathered, provided from the department heads. Um, it meets once and right. kind of prioritizes things yeah. based on um, their knowledge of, it makes recommendations. Um, and so there's that level of, of expertise of, of how do we gain the information that, how do we gain the information that that boiler's gonna last us 15 years and that roof's gonna last us 20 years? And the, that's not a good example because Keith could probably tell us that, but the parking lot's gonna last 15 years or it needs to be mm -hmm. sealed and crack Fire sealed. Fire truck's gonna last. You know, crack sealed well, yeah. in eight years. And uh, I guess the question is how do we gain that level of knowledge for the set the library has or that they got? Yeah. Well, um, See, and can, we get, idea, can yeah. we get that in-house, or well, can we not get that in-house? But yeah. you see, and, and I guess that's what I put that the person who I'm thinking about doesn't have to have the detailed knowledge of all these pieces. The person is facilitating the, 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 the answer. How are we going to put together this laundry list of capital projects that we know need to be done, and here's the anticipated <coughs> schedule for all these things? And it's an right. inventory list, and then it's a, a, a date by list or an anticipated date by right. list. That's not someone who, because the person who knows about about fire trucks isn't going to be the same person who knows about about roofs. But the person who's coordinating this can yeah. can find the right information. But unless you have one person responsible for finding this information, it doesn't get done. Yeah, yeah I well, yeah, I agree that one or or, or several, but but I I think that. I may be wrong in this, but I think the town people have been misled that the municipal building committee was doing all of this. No, not the municipal oh, building committee. Well, I was no, they're not. I don't think anyone. I don't think thinks anybody that. thinks that the building committee is taking the place of the capital planning. No way. No, but I do think. No, but, but, right but for people. building maintenance, they, I think there's people that assumed that was the committee that was looking at it, mm. and you know, it, it's come up at some of our meetings, building committee meetings, that. And it was clear that no, all we're focusing on is the town hall and, and maybe the center I school. Don't that was it. But I don't think there's more than a handful of people, and I don't even know well, who I, would I, think of the building committee has that that kind of knowledge. I know. I, I agree. Well, there was there was people before on the okay, well, they've changed. They've changed built membership on the building committee over the years. Before there was people that were familiar with building maintenance. All right, that was, uh, that was what, a long whatever. time yeah, ago. And, right. but, and again, the building committee hasn't been, up, up until the town hall project began in 2011, yeah. Yeah. my first seven years on, on this select board, the building committee was very quiet, right. to put it politely. So so that, that thought that the building committee was responsible for this was in the previous century. Well, right. Uh, Okay. So I would like to I would like to encourage us to ask Brian to put together a plan on on how we're going to create this inventory of capital yeah. items in town. Yeah, yeah. some yeah. ideas and options. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we're what what we developed last year was a 
was a uh, little five years and then ten years out mm -hmm. as to what the needs are from the from the department heads. So we have a pretty good idea. Fred touched on this earlier. We have a pretty good idea about equipment and mm -hmm. vehicles. Right. We don't have a good handle on facilities, mm. big ticket items, facilities, um, mm. roof, mm -hmm. boilers, windows, doors, windows, garage doors. We don't have a good handle on the facilities aspect of it. Mm. You know, um, John Hannon can tell us when he's going to ask for a new fire truck and. Chief Savini can tell us when he's going to ask for a new police car, um, and Keith can tell us and Keith does Keith does a really good job of he's going to need a dump truck in mm -hmm. how many of years? Nine years. Yeah. Equipment and vehicles, pretty good. Facilities. Yeah. Well, then maybe that's the, that's the place where we want to see if we can make progress this year on that. Yeah, I think that's. Right. And if Brian, Brian, Brian if you step. think it's a good, if if you think you can manage a volunteer, like Fred suggests. That's fine, but a volunteer can't be in charge of it. A paid person has right. to be in charge of it. And then if you decide to get that information from a volunteer, that's fine, but you're the one that's cracking the whip. Yeah. A volunteer. Okay. I think he just shook his head yes. Yeah, did he? Is that, is and, that um, have we exhausted the list? Yeah. Uh, now let me ask, I don't know whether it's on here or not. Uh, the other study, uh, complete, Complete streets? Oh yeah, complete streets, tier two is yep. on here. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm gonna that's completed. Where, where do we stand with, with implementing it then from there? Complete streets, tier one was completed. Now we're on to tier two. Isn't it great, these programs? Okay, we're mm -hmm. on to tier two, okay. Tier two is a prioritization plan. Okay. So at a future meeting, I'm going to ask that the, we like to appoint committees, right? Yeah. We're going to try to put together a small committee to work with FERCOT on prioritizing our complete streets okay. projects, and we'll have a public Why hearing. is FERCOT involved in our prioritization? Um, because we had a grant through MassDOT okay. for them to help us. Oh, for them to help us, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and then uh, Conway School of Design did that study year ago and they recommended things to the board that we look at or do. Are we looking at any of that uh, anywhere in any of these projects? My understanding is that would fall under the complete streets. Well. Unless you could think yeah. of other aspects of it that you want to consider. And maybe the capital plan would be an appropriate that list those. Could, could be uh, under there, yeah. And so it would be facilities and, infra and other infrastructure. That opens up a can of worms, yeah. but... Yeah, it does, but, yeah. you know, yeah. worms have yeah, a purpose in life, that, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, low priority regional police, Conway, Health Center School Readers, Highway Department, okay. Generator project for elementary school. Wasn't there money set aside for that? I'm told it wasn't enough. And we don't have gas. And we lost a grant and we don't have gas. So did we get our money back that was... It never was sitting, it's, it's sitting, oh, in just sitting there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so the, what we were talking about earlier, capital improvement committee or project committee or whatever, put in a high priority. Uh, we can whatever you, whatever you want to do. Yeah, we want to try to do this for the next budget cycle. Or At least it makes them like start it makes them like yeah. Course. I was just say making some some progress on that. I think mm -hmm. is a reasonable expectation. Uh, and then and some completely solving it. We may not get that in this one but budget progress. cycle, but right. progress is probably good. Yeah, yeah. But we right. need we need to we really need to beef up the, the facilities part the facilities of the capital plan. Mm -hmm. We really do. And, and you know, the poster child for that is the laundry list of really important stuff that the school needs to tackle now. And we, we've seen this huge list, and all of it's really important, but it sort of, we, we don't want our list to get ever get that big for immediate needs. No, right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That, that should be a, a, a lesson learned for us. So I believe this school is going to be asking 
We like committees. The school is going to be asking for the select board to appoint a representative to a subcommittee for the Frontier Bond proposal. Um, yeah, we wanted to make that people who were knowledgeable about so I need buildings. To, I need to get some clarification as to how that's really going to work out before I bring it to you formally. Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm really not sure how. I need some clarifications. No, oh, okay. No, I'm happy for you to be clear. Okay, is that it? Is that it for the priority list? Okay, anything else? Town administrator updates? No, ADA grant was submitted. Told you the tax rate. That's about it. Okay, so this is this is uh, finally got approved the tax rate. That's yeah, official. The state, yeah. the officials. And right. um, the rec committee gave uh, permission for the Sunnyvale Club to use all the various places across town that they've used in the past. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, moving to adjourn that. Oh, yes. Okay. Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Next meeting is December 11th. Okay. December 11th, 6 o'clock. Bring your popcorn. Oh, yeah?